morning, everyone. Um, I am Shoman Bandubadha. I'm the James Sterling Chair of Architecture at Liverpool University, um, uh, where we have been um, over the last uh, couple of years or so uh, working very closely with Dr. Only to develop a proposal, uh, which uh, we have uh, more recently discussed in a little more detail uh, with the Qatar National Library. And uh, we're hoping that um, we will take, be able to take this forward. Um, I'll just give a very quick idea of what this project is and uh, also where we are coming from in terms of the expertise that we are going to bring in to this particular project, this very exciting project, which we are calling the, the traditional Gulf architecture project, which will focus on Qatar and its region as the kind of principal area. Now, one of the key problems that we have is that uh, over a very, very long time, ever since the, uh, the, the kind of use, the, the first use of photography in this particular part of the world, we find that there are photographs that have been uh, collected, created, collected, printed out, and disseminated over across a wide range of uh, locations and sites. Now, often what has happened is that these collections are lying dispersed across various libraries, private collections, bodies, and so on. And many of these private collections are in an incredibly vulnerable state because uh, it is in the hands of a single owner and then there is no sort of uh, plan for its future preservation. But also in that process, what we are looking at is that this kind of incredible wealth of uh, both uh, documentation of physical settings of towns and houses and buildings and neighborhoods, but also uh, the in intangible heritage, the kind of processes that people went through to make things, to exchange ideas, to exchange goods and practices and so on. So that's all in a state of vulnerability. Incredibly, uh, also at the same time, uh, right across the world, there were sort of various efforts to map to document uh, these parts of the world, and that again has a very, very, very long history. Uh, we are talking about maps, which are on the left hand side, for example, two uh, drawings and so on, which are happening today uh, in the more recent times, uh, documenting settlements, documenting their uh, sociocultural make makeup, documenting buildings and architecture, through which we know better how these uh, places develop. Now, all of that is again lying dispersed across many collections, many researchers, and so on. So the idea is that to pull all of that together in, under one umbrella and to begin to show how Qatar, within a wider context, uh, established itself, but also established trade relationships, cultural exchange, social exchange, and so on. So that's the idea, the bigger idea. As I say that Qatar being the focus, but also we are looking into the Gulf area as a kind of region of exchange and ideas. And possibly beyond that, because Qatari uh, traders and businessmen had long-standing relationships across the Western Indian Ocean area, ranging from India even beyond that to the, the Ch Chinese area, the South China area, to the Eastern African area. So eventually, we hope that we will be able to pull a great range of material which is relevant to this particular part uh, together under this umbrella. So the idea is a very exciting one, that we have a three-year project uh, which looks into the history of architectural identity within the Gulf region and especially focusing on Qatar. It's also providing a dynamic social com commentary and an economic commentary because these things are so closely related to architecture. Architecture is never made possible without social organization, cultural practices, without economic exchange. Also, uh, the story of traditional architecture can only be told not only just through its houses, but essentially about neighborhoods, about settlements, about haras, and therefore we are going to look into these different scales of uh, habitation. We also include, want to include material culture evidences of social customs, of cultural history, of, uh, again, uh, as I was saying, uh, intangible heritage practices as well. And we're tentatively looking at a period between 1700s to 1960s, which is a period where we, uh, we can, uh, let, sort of, with some degree of certainty, collect evidence. So the main components of the project, intended project, is that we have a digital archiving process which assembles resources and makes open access a whole range of stuff which is 
as yet undigitized perhaps, inaccessible in private collections, uh, limited, limited access because there are certain public collections which are not immediately open access, and combining that with available open access material as well so that we can begin to provide this kind of wider umbrella. However, just assembling material is not enough because we need to actually understand how and what processes went in to make the research, uh, make the, the, these places. So the research to examine how indigenous societies, trade and migration flows really interacted to make Qatar and the Gulf region what it is, this multicultural cosmopolitan entity, that's something that we are going to research. So a huge amount of time and resources will be devoted to the actual researching of these interactions. But also, research and collection is of no avail if it cannot be provided access to a wider group of people, public at large. And so therefore, the idea is to employ diverse communication methods to begin to take care of the local and wider public dissemination of this material to, into learned communities, businesses, professionals, administrators, policy makers, the whole range of people who actually shape up the future of uh, the, our environments. And that's another thing that we are going to tackle. So there will be two teams, one uh, based in Liverpool and the other one entrenched here in the Qatar National Library. And I'm just going to talk about very briefly about the Liverpool team and what we are going to do um, so that it, and that will actually work very closely. This is the kind of an overall idea of the team where we have digitization specialists, we have IT specialists, we have anthropologists, archaeologists, we have uh, obviously architectural historians and architectural technology specialists and so on. So we can bring together a multidisciplinary team which we have been working with uh, since about 2008-9. Uh, in, in Liverpool, but previously in Nottingham Trent. We've been looking into diverse collections and where they are. There are many of these are private collections. There are collections with uh, anthropologists, archaeologists. There are archa architectural historians. There are a range of people who are uh, retired uh, practitioners. There are people who have worked in the Gulf area over a long period of time, especially uh, during the, the, the discovery of oil. And they have fantastic collection of photographs and images and drawings, which we are hoping to bring together. And this only provides a snippet of that information. So the key deliverables, as I was saying, is the digital repo repository, an online encyclopedia, which will pull together the research, external resources. We will provide the, uh, sort of uh, updated uh, list of network of specialists, also publication of databases, uh, publication database so that we can pull together all the bibliographic material, dissemination through uh, project web page, annual conference, exhibitions, and end of, end of project major publication. A very quick idea of how this will work, where we identify collections, we digitize them, we create a metadata, which is the information, background information. Now, unlike many of the textual material, especially with the case of uh, uh, the British Library material. Here, the metadata research uh, takes a long time because of the, of the dispersed nature, but also of the, the paucity of research material that is there to back it up. So we are going to bring together our knowledge of this whole region and the historical material to uh, provide and develop that reliable metadata, and then to release it uh, to the public. We've been doing uh, various uh, digital archives ourselves, and there is a Liverpool School of Architecture uh, repository which is in the making, where we are collecting together various architectural resources from different parts of the world. There are various search criteria we establish, and that's a kind of very quick example of how we might be able to uh, provide a range of criteria through, through which we can uh, create this open search. And the collection of material which will include hand-drawn drawings, textual material, photographic material, and so on, will feature. We have a website which is uh, on RKM, which is the Research Center of uh, Architecture and Cultural Heritage in India, Arabia, and the Maghreb, which provides a kind of overview of the various projects that we have been involved with over the last few years. And this is just a quick update of that. The various projects ranging from uh, a lot of these are in the Middle East, but also in India. Uh, we are working on two major projects in India. We are also working in Morocco as well. 
Um, all this is based on strong ongoing research in this area, uh, which began in about 1990s, middle 1993-94, and a um, number of publications have arrived, uh, books and uh, monographs and uh, journal papers and so on, which is the basis. What did we try to do is to bring together architectural material with social cultural history, and uh, that is how we can, and economic history, and that's how we, uh, uh, if you like, kind of cross-reference the material. We use diverse methods of field work. We do terrestrial field work, basic measuring, drawing up, and so on. But we support that with aerial photographic material, which we can turn through uh, uh, photogrammetric software into 3D modeling. We also undertake a lot of ethnographic work, which supports our uh, architectural understanding. All this pr produces some very high quality drawn uh, documentation, which provides a kind of accurate detail of uh, the architectural settings that we have, and they are all georeferenced as well. We have worked on the uh, Bahala World Heritage Site, for example, as a kind of major heritage site, uh, and over a long period of time, from early 2000s up to now. We provide urban analysis, which is undertaken on the basis of some of the photogrammetric modeling, but also on the terrestrial uh, documentation that we do. Uh, we also include typological studies of buildings and sites, we undertake, on the basis of all of that, we undertake master plans to suggest how some of these places can be taken forward to future generations. We have produced a number of uh, government reports which document, it starts from the historical social cultural documentation right to the master plan suggestions and how strategies could be formulated, keeping in mind the developmental imperatives of um, uh, development of uh, training, job creation, education, and the whole range of things which pull it together. We also have significant capacity in terms of producing representational material, which can also be used for um, analytical purposes. So for example, on the left-hand side, we have 3D uh, the sort of powder uh, digital fabrication uh, using uh, powder material, and where we can develop sectional material and sort of very various other evidences. On the right-hand side, we have the kind of the top view of a digital, digital model of the Bahala World Heritage Site, or the immediate advance of the of the fort area, which can actually be turned around. And therefore, we are thinking that some of these digital material can be incorporated into the digital encyclopedia that we will hope to produce. We've been doing capacity building, training uh, students up uh, in various cases, and again, it's all f the supported by. Um, guidelines that we have developed for site work, uh, which is uh, on the bottom left. We, again, as I said, the dissemination is crucial to us. So both in Arabic and in English, we have been providing simpler uh, sort of uh, descriptions of these sites and why they're important. We are actually doing that through the various uh, government bodies and so on. We do uh, undertake high quality exhibition uh, work. Uh, on the left is Nottingham, on the right is MIT uh, in 2016, where we actually uh, brought together a huge range of material which pulls together uh, also a uh, range of specialists and so on in this case. We have provided a high quality presentation material for the National Museum in Oman, where we have developed the whole uh, touch screen structure, the, uh, how the data structure would work, uh, which is provided on the left hand side at the bottom. But the touch screens actually provide, with the 3D model, then again, which was uh, developed with our digital expertise, has been uh, providing really interesting experience of the Falad system and how the different components of the Falad system, the water system, work. On the right hand side, there are also this curated uh, wall of uh, heritage uh, where different aspects and different scales of heritage representation is brought together. Um, and we have in front also a whole series of models which are developed from our research uh, there. We then take uh, all of this material also to the present day where we are suggesting and we are building uh, adaptive reuse proposals for different projects within our master plan. One is an example in Salala, where we are uh, rebuilding uh, part of the destroyed, uh, uh, partly destroyed uh, merchant house, 18th century merchant house, with this particular project. Also, as I was saying, master plans have been taken forward, so we have worked very closely with the local community in developing cooperative 
uh, structures and how that cooperative might work in a particular Middle Eastern context and how those can then be taken forward to sort of detailed designs which can be beneficial to communities. So we have uh, information centers and sort of restoring gateway structures to creating uh, food courts and to creating uh, uh, sort of uh, food uh, related training centers and so on and so forth here. So that goes to show the kind of uh, the expertise that we hope to bring together, both from the historical understanding of vernacular settings into the awareness of present day uh, desires and uh, demands and so on. And we are hoping to pull all of that together and to bring that to bear on the project. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Shoman. Um, in turn, I will uh, introduce to you key members of this initiative uh, who will speak uh, about uh, the project just presented to you. Uh, next in our lineup uh, is, is uh, the most, uh, perhaps the most famous member uh, of our core team for this project, uh, Mr. Ibrahim Jada, uh, who is the uh, personification of the architecture community in Qatar and uh, Qatar's most famous architect, uh, who is uh, the uh, perhaps also the most famous champion of Qatar's traditional architecture and author of the definitive book on the subject. So without further ado, uh, I'd like to introduce, introduce to you Mr. Ibrahim Jada. Thank you, sir. Thank you, James. This works, Good morning. Yeah. Uh, well, I'd like to thank you, James, for the efforts and thank uh, Qatar Foundation and our library to really become an inspiring a place of light, of knowledge, and documentation. Uh, this is really thrilling. Uh, I remember when I came back from the States in 88, and even before, as I was a student, there was no references whatsoever. So I had to dig for the few references available and take photographs because I didn't have any reference to be inspired by. Now with this such a wonderful event and with the people from all over that are really are a reference into research into this, I see a potential that we've been dreaming of. And I certainly do hope that this becomes an annual gathering. But the question, documentation is so important so we know how we used to live, what was there, but what can we come up with as a result of all these studies? And uh, in my opinion, this is gonna be the seed for the younger generation of architects and so on to do further research, to, get, to dig deeper. And how did this civilization can manage and live without air conditioning, with a tough life, even though there was a thriving pearl diving industry, but how did they manage? So there is, in my opinion, a secret. Uh, there was an interesting analysis that uh, Professor Ardalan and his, the team of Harvard did when they analyzed even the old Fereges and the neighborhood, and it's proven that the temperature was much more pleasant in the inside due to the orientation, due to the materials, and I think the lessons that we're going to learn as we analyze this documentation is going to definitely be inspiring for the younger generations. And I'm hoping as years come next year or the year after, we, we on, don't only address the documentation of the old and what we did find out throughout from now until next year, but also see the beautiful experiments that are being done into creating contemporary Gulf architecture. What did we learn? As the first school, when I came there was nothing, so we start copying the architecture thinking that we are inspired. But as things develop and as the younger generation start learning from these ingredients and the birth of a contemporary Gulf architecture happens, this, I think, is going to be the venue. And you got my word, James? I'll make sure this happens next year, and even if I have to sell my car and finance it. <laughs> Thank you, and let's enjoy this wonderful event. Thank you very much for that. My, next in our, our lineup uh, is Mr. Ar uh, Nader Ardeland, who is uh, one of the most uh, seasoned architects working on and in the region 
uh, for well over 50 years. Um, Nutter uh, was the initiator and uh, co-lead uh, investigator for a very well-known project amongst the architecture community, uh, Gulf Sustainable Urbanism. Uh, and we uh, wish to work in partnership with him and his former team on that project for this project as part of a much larger uh, academic scholarly network uh, of people who will uh, uh, help bring this material that we'll be putting online to life through their own uh, analysis and interpretation. So without further ado, uh, Nader, would you like to? Thank you, James. Thank you, Stuart, for your original introduction. I came to Qatar in 1991, I recall, uh, to Qatar University, where I gave a lecture on the value of what I would call perennial architecture of the region. That's about 27 years ago. And mashallah, Ibrahim, where I met, is just about as young as when I first met him, and just as enthusiastic. Really, it's amazing, and it's so encouraging to see the steady commitment of this nation and of Qatar Foundation that came into existence during these 27 years to seeking knowledge about who you are. What's the meaning of your existence here, the value of your forefathers, and how that these might guide you into lessons of how to build your future society and community. As a result of having also lived about 12 years in the Gulf area and as a practicing architect and also as a researcher into what I had always learned that I should do, which is to go to the origins of how we build, what we think, what our worldview has been, what it might transform to be. I, in 2011, I uh, brought uh, ideas for a study of the entire Gulf region of eight countries uh, to Mashereb. At that time, the director of that laudable entity, uh, Mr. Isa al Mohannadi, accepted through also the auspices of Her Highness Sheikh Moza, who was interested in the study of the whole Gulf region, that we would carry out a Harvard project, which we really focused on sustainability. And I describe sustainability also with the adjective holistic sustainability, about the phenomenal aspect of our physical existence and also about our intangible cultural existence. When you put the two together, I believe that that is the sustainability that will truly be meaningful. So in the second part of this presentation, I'll show you some of the examples of what that has been. I want to say how thrilled I am to see that in this continuing process of documenting who you are and where you should be going, that my friend Schumann has presented this wonderful, wonderful project uh, for the traditional uh, golf architecture, which really, of course, is a metaphor for much larger than just architecture. It is the built environment. It is uh, the totality of our existence here. Also, I have not known Dr. James On Lee, but only through our correspondence. But now that I have come to know him and his energetic, very pervasive, very uh, sympathetic, uh, encouraging, and organized way 
to bring us all together. I'm sure that this is going to be a very important contribution, and I hope that the Harvard work that we did will serve as one of the layers in which you build upon uh, for this documentation of archives. And I'm looking forward to working uh, with Qatar National Library in this venture. Thank you. Thank you very much for that, uh, Nader. Very grateful. Uh, last but not least, uh, we have the um, head of the Department of Architecture and Urban Planning at Qatar University, uh, my friend and uh, colleague, uh, Dr. Uh, Fadl Fadli, who will be speaking to you about uh, the involvement of uh, uh, Qatar University architecture students and faculty uh, in this project. Thank you. Uh, very pleased to be here, to be here in Qatar National Library. I would like to thank uh, James, a good friend and colleague, for putting this all together. I recall about two years ago when James came to me in uh, the office, I was just freshly installed as head of the department, and we were talking on how to put this. It was a small grant to organize the conference and the workshop. And when I see how how it grew, I am just uh, very hopeful and I am very confident that the project in itself, as said by Showman and the team, will be very successful. In this very short presentation, I am just uh, going to expose and uh, highlight how our department, the Department of Architecture and Urban Planning at Qatar University, could support this initiative through the work which has already been done, but also through the abilities and capacities we have. I, I put the presentation, I think, around 3 a.m. this morning. because James didn't let me in of time. And also, I, I will not forgive you that you put me to speak after uh, Nader, which is a very, I have to deliver a very good uh, speech on this. So just briefly, DAUP, which is the initials of the department, has developed excellent portfolio related to what we call uh, TAG, traditional architecture in the Gulf, and we have eminent professors and faculty and researchers. We managed to attract, this is a rough uh, figure, around 200,000 US dollars through different schemes of grants, ranging from Europe's and PRPs and uh, CWSPs. We have also internal grants funded from Qatar University, which relates to this. We also aim to bid for further, and it could be probably part of the large project put by uh, Liverpool School of Architecture, and also through other uh, schemes, either in Qatar or international ones. <clears throat> Just to give you briefly, we have many related publications. I have a couple of faculty here, colleagues who have worked in the field. We have more than 15 faculty and researchers who could involve in the project. And we have the uh, greatest, uh, chance to have over 150 students between undergraduate and postgraduate. I just spotted one of our ex-students, uh, Miss Aisha Al-Asiri, who is sitting there. She is uh, finishing her master's degree, and they worked a lot on uh, themes related to traditional architecture. We also organized seminars. We had expertise workshops. And I am sure this will help a lot uh, setting up the project and moving forward to it. One of the examples, this is a Europe project led by Dr. Jamal Boussa and Dr. Shaibu. Dr. Jamal is just here. It relates to uh, Beit Zaman, done by a group of six students under the supervision of Dr. Jamal Boussa and Dr. Shaibu Garba. I will show you later on uh, briefly a small video. So they conducted surveys using photogrammetric uh, methods, but also measured drawings. And they conducted also through design. One of our senior students got awarded a prize about two or three years ago, and which links to uh, the development of uh, a settlement down in Al Wakra. And uh, another research we did, I was supervising this. It was back when I arrived to Qatar in 2010 2011. It was about digitizing. Uh, built heritage in Qatar. I will talk about this later on. And we were discussing this yesterday, just at the pre-start uh, of the conference, how we could save those uh, small collections, which are private collections, which are quite vulnerable collections, and how to put them together. And I think the project, the TAGP, would be such a great opportunity to deliver this. 
One of these was the development of what we call Qatar HB, which I will be talking later on this afternoon, and how we could set up a database in itself, probably for each country in the Gulf, and then link them together, or probably we can just design a new uh, platform or uh, database for it. Just to briefly end up, we can have many uh, work together, as long as there is a really great direction, and I really feel it and sense it. And I don't want to talk a lot, I am a not, uh, I mean, I don't like talking a lot. So I leave you with this, and I hope the clip will work well. This was done by the six students working on the Europe project, the undergraduate research experience program, with Dr. Jamal Boussaint and Dr. Shaibou. The heart of Middle East, and bounded by the Arabian Gulf, lies the state of Qatar, that's capital of Doha, of 187 kilometers. Qatar has maintained a progressive outlook while remaining deeply rooted in its cultural heritage and traditions. As a city of international repute, Doha has hosted several milestone events ranging from large-scale exhibitions and summits. However, let's travel back to 1950, to the olden streets of Doha, where life was simple and houses were engagingly classic. Where one little house sits in the heart of Doha, specifically in Farij al Ghanim area. Beit al Zaman, an intriguing house standing till today, holding valuable history dating back to many years ago. مركبة بارعي 
تخلي هاي لان لو بطلوا الفرخه اه علشان ما تكسر السعر ايوه 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 بعد ليش مخلينا احنا سعر ما حطيتوش الدريشة هنا؟ هاي هاي التوعية عشان لو فتح الدريشة هي تضم على القبة اه ايه هذه هو الاصل انا قلت حق المهندس ان هذه هو الاصل المربعات هي اللي قلت لكم المربعات وبينهم وبينهم خشب لا 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 البناء كله يديني ولا هاي هاي كلها جديد هاي كلها عقب ما ما كان في غير الأرضية ما كانت كذي الأرضية كانت رمو تراب عقب عقب ما ليها العوزة وما يشنو وكذا كذا سووا سميت ما يسمونه مرمر شو شو اسمه فلان أول كانوا سميت هذه عقب لما تطور إيه أول كان سميت كنا نلعب كتول يطلع لي يمي التي اللي تنقز على السميت اي هاي بعدين اي هاي بعدين اوكي زين شوفوا شوفوا الحصى والهذي هاي 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 الاساس هاي البنيان اول هذه الغرفة اللي هنا الغرفة اللي هني هاي هذه صاروا بعدين يعني البيت أصلا ما في غرفة في الأصل فوق أي فوق هاي بعدين لما العائلة كبرت شوي سووا غرفتين فوق غرفة مني وغرفة مني أوكي غرفة حق الوالد وغرفة حق العائلة لأنهم ما فيهم الأخوين كانوا عايشين بالبيت الأول كانوا يعيشون مع بعض والله أنا أتمنى الله يسلمك أغني في ال قبل التسعين So this is just to give give you a little flavor about our team and how we can contribute to the project in Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Fadl. So I hope that uh, our speakers have shown you, given you a taste for uh, the nature of this project and of its potential and of its potential contribution and uses. Uh, here in Gutter in the Gulf region. Uh, this is part of our larger mission at the Gutter National Library to uh, preserve and promote the history and heritage of Gutter and its region. Uh, we now have uh, about uh, 10 minutes for questions and answers if anyone is, would like to ask questions about this project proposal. It's at the proposal stage right now, we're discussing it, uh, and we hope that uh, this will uh, see the light of day uh, in the near future. So the door, the floor is open. Professor Rob Carter, UCL. I have got a question for Dr. Fadel. Um, it's a very nice house. Uh, we went to get visited once uh, some time ago. Um, do you know what's happened to it now? Who owns the, the, the house? 
If you notice, I didn't work on the house. It was yeah. the team led by Dr. Jamal. He's yeah. just there. He can give you. What's happened to it now? Do you know? The, the, the house. Yeah, the film. Now uh, we submitted the project to the Qatar museums. Ah. And they are starting to, to restore the house and so on. Okay. So now it's closed for restoration. About right. two years ago, the work had started. Sure. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I may comment, there is an interesting uh, thing happening now, eventually, that the QMA started actually identifying sort of listed building. Uh, and this is one of the buildings. Some they have actually bought it from the owners, and some, I've seen some owners to where they came and they said the, the government or uh, the museum authorities gave them the opportunity to renovate it and, and maintain it as a family majlis or so on, like in the case of Almana House. So it's a, it's a good sign. <laughs> just want to add something, uh, Rob. I think the most important thing is not just to record, digitize, or save them in papers. Is when you see these things happening, like uh, Dr. Jamal said, is when we do an action with our students, with our colleagues and friends, and these actions can save those buildings, those manuscripts, those stories. This is the most important outcome. Uh, the project, of course, will create awareness um, of the importance of the uh, historical built environment of Qatar in the region. Um, and we will then be able to draw in multiple partners uh, on a number of, obviously, follow-on or related projects that will help to not only uh, preserve the memory of this uh, built environment, but to uh, help with its preservation, its physical preservation. Uh, the limits of our involvement will be the digital, uh, but uh, government uh, and private sector can get involved in the physical uh, preservation of this, uh, of this important heritage, which is disappearing. Uh, do you, do you got a microphone? Thank you very much. I was wondering how integral are oral histories into understanding their architectural heritage? Uh, certainly the project will be uh, incorporating oral history. Um, at the National Library side of the project, which we've not discussed, um, we have a broad mission to, uh, as I said, preserve and to promote the history and heritage of Gutter. And that in, uh, involves, uh, in future, uh, a community archival initiative uh, to reach out to, to uh, uh, the community and to identify uh, private collections uh, that uh, Qataris may have, photographs, uh, documents, uh, maps, uh, and of course to, to interview them uh, about, the, about the old days uh, and to preserve that ultimately online for, for, uh, for use by students and society and researchers uh, and so on. So this is just part of a larger uh, future um, initiative to uh, preserve uh, the local memory uh, of Gutter. Thank you. I was, and specifically with the architectural heritage, so I'm wondering, like in the film, whether you have this man explaining how he, how his family used the house. Is this typical for the, the kind of work that is being done? I'm sorry, this is not my field, so I'm wondering, um, is there a sense that there's a need on these kind of uh, architectural history projects to bring in someone who would know, or is it, do you understand what I'm trying to say? Is, this, is it necessary that for, for us to bring in a local or someone who used to live in the house and explain to us, or is this just an extra bonus, an added bonus? Oh. So I think uh, Fadl's intention was to illustrate what uh, Gutter University can do by involving its students and faculty uh, with the project. So as you can see, there's, there's a core activity uh, that will be uh, um, uh, taking place uh, you know, at the library, but then there's associated activity where we can reach out to the wider community of uh, architectural students, professors, practicing architects, uh, and so on. And those people are welcome to become involved. Uh, they, of course, would do their, their own projects, like the one that uh, Fadl showed, which could then be uh, contributed to uh, our online uh, uh, database. But the, 
role of the library would to would be to to provide guidelines on on digitization on filming uh, 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 how to conduct oral uh, histories and things like that we would like to work in partnership of course with you at UCL and your colleagues uh, and, in, and a network of, 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 of professionals here in gutter to help with this so this is very much a community project uh, engaging with everybody who's interested, all stakeholders and interested parties in the country and, and beyond. Uh, some of which we will be doing, uh, uh, some of which uh, others will be contributing. Um, th there's various stakeholders, if you like, who have been gathering oral histories relating to architecture, but uh, the issue is Stitching, stitching it together, bring, bringing this information together. So Musharab, for example, has done a great deal of interviews um, about life in the old town and also about specific buildings. Um, and I believe that they do make their oral histories available to researchers, actually. Um, and um, in addition, uh, the private engineering office tends to uh, uh, talk to the elderly residents of the buildings and the areas that they're restoring as well. And I think that might be harder to get hold of, that kind of information. But um, uh, I know that Muhammad Ali Abdullah, for example, has collected a great deal of information and may be willing to share. Um, we, we won't know unless we ask. Um, so perhaps the role is, is, is uh, a way of convening this information um, for the project, as well as the architectural recording, trying to find a way to tap into these existing resources. Because there's actually, I think, probably quite a lot there. Uh, more than we realize. That's a, a very good point. Uh, uh, oh, sorry, go ahead. Yes. O oral history is definitely important. It's a big bonus. Just to give you an example, for somebody visiting here who didn't know how people lived and looking at these posters down, the windows are low, not because people were short, but because they sat on the floor. And believe it or not, half, more than half, Sukhwagif was built uh, rebuilt based on oral history. Muhammad Ali was sitting with the older people as they were describing, he would sketch, he would show them, is this what you meant? And they have rebuilt uh, Fakhro House, some, some monumental buildings based on oral history. So it's definitely a big, big bonus to, to understand. Uh, there's a, uh, in addition to uh, finding um, collections, private collections, and to interviewing people into creating new data uh, to be uh, uh, preserved. Uh, we also uh, want to identify existing or past projects, uh, such as Gulf Sustainable Urbanism, such as the Origins of Doha project with, with you, Rob, uh, and to uh, uh, coordinate that with, with our online uh, repository. Uh, so we will, of course, be reaching out to Musharab and others uh, and, and hope that they will participate in this so that they can, uh, we can uh, combine all of these previous projects so that we would start with a bang, not just w having to wait for this material to be uploaded, but already accessing existing material that we can, we can upload. Now, the details of how all that's going to be done has yet to be worked out. Uh, this is at the proposal stage, after all. But uh, you can see the exciting potential and the significance uh, of, what, of this endeavor and how important it is for the preservation of the national memory. I just want to, to add a point. I join uh, Brahim on this. And regarding the narrative go with, with uh, digitizing the building or recording the building. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the narrative going uh, with the building itself or with any uh, heritage item, it is very important to go to the source, which could be the people using the, the house or the building and record this. Primary data is very important in this case. And some buildings are getting, are old and the owners are very old and that they will, they have disappeared or they will disappear very quickly. So it's very good to put out a strategy either part of the project or a plug-in to the project to, to work on this very fast. Because if these things disappear, we will never have record of those things. And it's not just the building by itself. If you notice in the video, the guy was saying, and he is the son of the owner who deceased uh, previously. So he was saying, what is new, what is original? So this is very important. You can see uh, 
how uh, by engaging uh, architecture students at Qatar University and other students uh, throughout the country who are interested in uh, architecture and its associated material and intangible culture, uh, we, we can produce a great deal uh, uh, and, and, and simultaneously engage a, the, the, a new or the next generation of architects uh, and, uh, and architectural historians uh, and, and, and heritage specialists uh, in this project. So we think that we can uh, tick a number of boxes, if you like, uh, uh, far going far beyond simply uh, putting material online. Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, my schedule here says we have coffee break now at 10.30, uh, followed by at 11 o'clock, uh, our second panel of the conference uh, covering major research projects uh, with some of my colleagues here, plus Rob Carter, who will be talking about the origins of Doha project. So we have half an hour break, uh, during which time I invite you to come down and to meet with the core members of our team to take a look at our wonderful exhibition here uh, and also to go to the restaurant and have a, a, a refreshing cup of coffee. And I'll see you back here at 11 o'clock. So would you please join me in thanking our, our panelists for our opening uh, panel for today's conference.